Peace. You know who this is. Um, family, I was waiting to see who was going to cover the Everton um, lawsuit when people are suing them about their reparations first. I was like, mm, I was betting on Professor Black Troop doing it first. That goofy. But Jason Black did it first. And some people will say, well, you kind of probably wasn't wrong because they probably the same person. Who knows? Who cares? But I just want to touch on this because he did this four hour live stream and just like, you know, it was just crazy amount of lies, goofiness, contradictions, all that, all that. But I just want to touch on this one part right here real quick, because this is the part that because the way he touched on this. It was the way I was thinking that Professor Black Troop was going to touch on it, but also in a slightly different angle. But my point will still stand when I go into it right here. Let's listen to it. Uh, oh. Race-based programs such as internships and scholarships across the country are continuing to face roadblocks following the gutting of a form of affirmative action. On Wednesday, the Oklahoma Supreme Court dismissed a lawsuit that argued that the remaining survivors of the 1921 Tulsa Race Massacre should be compensated for the city, by the city for damages, dealing a blow to their ongoing fight for reparations. Now, those were people who actually experienced discrimination. They actually lived to, dis lived to experience it. And the Oklahoma Supreme Court said, yeah, not you. Yeah, you're not covered by that anyway. Didn't give an explanation why. Just, hey, we're white and we say so. Didn't even try to give a judicial explanation. We're white and we say so. Uh, case dismissed. You are in a race war, and the race war continues. It's not something that ended decades ago. They are is a, is a continuing criminal enterprise. Now, listen to this next part. Earlier this month, a federal appeals court blocked the black-owned venture capitalist firm Fearless Fund from awarding grants exclusively to black women entrepreneurs. They made a mistake there, too, by the way. Now for the next paragraph. Some reparations leaders say they've taken a more race-neutral approach to their program with hopes of avoiding legal battles. Not hopes of avoiding it, but understanding what these folks have said. It's like, okay, we found a method that doesn't rely on that. Camilla Moore, chair of California's Reparations Task Force, said her commission recommended the state's program be lineage-based. <laughs> now, who was it who told them that? Wait, time out. I just want to touch on two things real quick. One, you didn't make that whole lineage-based thing up. Yvette Carnell did. Two... Lineage is not even the right word that y'all even using. Y'all show how stupid y'all are by even using the word lineage because you're using it wrong. But anyway, um, we'll continue. Who was it who told them, no, you can't bring in immigrants. We don't bring in immigrants and latecomers because that's a poison pill that these other folks will use against us. They don't come from our lineage. They will argue that it's based on race. We said, no, nope, it's based on our lineage. The same thing you used to justify for the Japanese, for the Jews, and for the Native Americans. We found a lineage. You're not going to include these other folks with us because that's a poison pill meant to be able to derail us. We're not going to fall for that one. We're saying it based on our lineage. You've already set precedent for our lineage. So you don't have a legal leg to stand on to d deny that or lineage. And that gives us the ability to ignore a Supreme Court if they don't adhere to their precedent and the law. So, no. You heard it. That's the part I really that really made me want to make this video. This goofball. Not only did he contradict himself multiple times in this clip that I played, but he said we have the ability to ignore the Supreme Court. Let's first, let's deal with the contradiction right here. First of all, we don't know what Supreme Court he's talking about because he never specifies, but we can probably make an educated guess and talk about whether it's the state Supreme Courts, but even if it's not the state Supreme Court, the same thing applies for the U.S. Supreme Court. But let's continue. What did he just say? He just said that the Oklahoma, the people who survived Black Wall Street, they sued, but they, they try to get their reparations. And what happened? They lost because the Oklahoma Supreme Court said no. Mind you, like he pointed out, which is true, these people directly experienced Black Wall Street. They were there. They're not descendant of some people they never met that went through Black Wall Street. They went through it their self. They went through the, the massacre themselves and the Oklahoma Supreme Court ignored uh, throughout their case and basically ruled against them not throughout the case ruled against them and what he said because I'm white and I said so now let's think about this why would the I'm white and I say so logic not also apply to the California lineage based reparations a um, movement thing or whatever you got going on task force or whatever why would it not apply to that? It would apply to that. There's no way that somebody can do I'm white and I say so 
Because what does I'm white and I say so even mean? It means that white people just made a bat, um, did something that is wrong, and they're justifying it by just simply saying, I'm white and I say so. I got the power. I could do what I want. The same way you would tell a kid. Kid say, well, you said I could do this, but now you're not letting me do it. Well, you can't do it. Why? Because I said so. That's what I'm white and I say so is. So why would they not be able to do it to California? Why not? Because if they can use I'm white and I say so logic to stop people who actually experience the pain from getting anything, why wouldn't they be able to use that same logic to stop people who never experienced the pain, who never directly experienced the pain, never met anybody who ever dis, um, directly experienced the pain? They don't even know anybody who knows the people who directly experienced the pain. Why would they not be able to use that same logic on for a lineage based argument and more importantly how when they do use that logic are you going to just ignore the supreme court because they have quote unquote legal precedent that they have to follow because of what they did for other people that's not true that's a lie this whole notion that somehow if the Supreme Court said yes or the court said yes for somebody, they have to say yes for you. That's not true. The Supreme Court of the United States has reversed itself several times, over 300 times to be exactly. And one of the most fam famous cases of them reversing themselves is what? It's the separate but equal decision where they overturn what? Plessy v. Ferguson with Brown v. Boyd. This is why... This is disrespectful and this is stupid. Not only is this guy saying stupid stuff like you can ignore the Supreme Court. He's saying that they have to follow all legal precedent. Like once a precedent is established, they have to follow it. They cannot break it. When we as black people know better than anybody else, that's not true. Because the legal precedent for segregation being constitutional would ha uh, was already decided. And Plessy v. Ferguson. And it was overturned in Brown v. Board. Like, who are you talking to? Who is this for? How stupid can people be? Like, literally, how stupid can people be? So we're going to go over the contradiction that you made. One minute you accepted that white, I'm white and I say so can work. Next minute you say it, it can't work. And let's go over it again. It can work for people who directly experience pain, but it can't work for people who didn't directly experience pain because they said lineage. This is another thing I want to talk on. A lot of this quote unquote lineage talk is basically two things. It's anti-black immigrant rhetoric and also it's Moorish American paperwork nonsense repackaged. Because you, if you anybody who knows anything about the Moors, it's the... The whole, oh, if you didn't call yourself black, but you called yourself a Moorish American, this would not be happening to you. This is the same concept because he made that point several times in the video. Like if you had not used the word race, but you used lineage, this wouldn't be happening. Like the people who are trying to hurt black people care about what you call yourself. Like what you call yourself is going to be, I'm white and I say so, is going to be stopped based on what you call yourself. Ridiculous. Nonsense. Stupid. And you people have ensured that no reparations will ever happen because it's at least in our lifetime, not even in our lifetime, but in the near future, next 50 years, next 40 years, because what? You let Trump win the election in 2016. Trump put three people on the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court is now 3-6 conservative. No, excuse me, 6-3 conservative. Do you honestly think that they're not going to use I'm white and I say so logic? Do you honestly believe that? Like if like right now, this Evanston thing is in federal court. It might make its way to the Supreme Court. Who believes that it's going to survive the Supreme Court? No one. And who made that possible? Black people by not voting for Hillary Clinton and letting Donald Trump win. But I'm going to end this video here. It's going on long enough. Like, share, subscribe, drop me a comment, tell me what you think. I might touch on some more stuff that he said in this um, this video because it was a lot of nonsense. 
So, yeah, I end this video here. Peace.